God is good. And all the time, we do have some announcements. Catherine, can you tell us what's going on on Tuesday night? Pauses in Evansburg. Summer picnic. Everybody goes Dutch? Yes. Okay. We meet to church at 6 o'clock for anybody that needs to arrive. If anybody needs to arrive, give me a call. Yeah. Okay. Let me know. We have to be there at 6. We have to be at Hosses at 6. We have to be at Hosses at 6. I've never eaten that slow in my life. <laughs> but just saying. But anyway, that's coming up. Uh, your reports will not be my office study Tuesday night because most people are going to be at losses. And uh, for those interested, on Wednesday, the, the Bible study is at 11 o'clock at uh, Bethany, 11 a.m. But also, there's going to be a home fellowship, depending on the weather. Um, pretty much everybody looks outside and sees if it's raining or threatening to rain. And if so, instead of being at Lankin's home on the patio, it will be at Bethany in the, the large uh, uh, fellowship hall in their basement.
Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He is to be revered above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families and peoples, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory to his name. Bring an offering and come to his courts. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. The world is firmly established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exalt and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord. For he is coming, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. The word of God for the people of God. Okay, now this first song we're going to do as a round. We haven't done this for a long, long time. But this side over here, myself and Stacy, we're going to leave. Now this side over here with uh, Ron and also David, they are going to be your song leaders. Diane's going to also pick in so it's my, um, um, and Rita, you can also, you know, help because, you know, guys, they need to help singing. Um, but you're going to follow in the round and you'll, you'll see um, you've got like the Yeah, actually, this may not be a bad time to literally pick up a book. And you'll find this on page 2002. And, uh, and then it shows like where people come in and everything. But uh, this song was written. I was wondering I mean, this thing came out like before I was born. I mean, people have been saying this in camp for years and years and years and years, and so we're going to try and catch up with them. Page 2002. Are you ready? Do you want to play it through, like, just the one round for that?
And our second one is Shining Jesus Shine.
joy. Joy because you put a new song in your heart. Joy because you're God and joy because you're cause for your people. We're sheep to love and ask you. We pray rich and winning on both gift and giver. We pray that you use us all in the ministry and service of thy son, Jesus the Christ. In his name we pray. Amen.
He's getting another bite. He was. Uh, he rides. He rides with the combat vest for charity, and he can walk to the review. So he does want to get another bite, and he is selfish, nervous because he still don't know what happened. He don't remember any of it, so he doesn't know if it was on his part, if it was the bite, what will happen again. So he is really nervous about it, but he wants to ride on the two month anniversary of the accident, so we'll see what happens. Okay. Again, and mom's then, wishes. Can I make a suggestion? Yes. He's getting older now. I'm 63 and I ride a scooter. <laughs> it does not have training wheels. But on the on the on ramp getting on to um, you know uh, we'll head towards Evansburg from Monster Road. Yes. Several times without any trouble, I fit 100 mile an hour just breaking wow. the traffic. I mean, a scooter can run. I can run with any Harley. In fact, since I've got the range, I can probably beat them one on the hill. Um, except when they, you know, their motor starts flapping out the tape. But in the short run, I can, I can take one. The same. And no gears or anything for him to you know, mess with, just twist and go. I told you my bad training wheels. I really don't want to get one. It's against my wishes. But I have one too, so. Well, right now, these spider pennies, you know, the drives <laughs> seem to be, you know, the, the thing, they're a little bit harder to flip, so maybe he can ride one of those. But I, I'm an advocate for scooters, particularly for old users. Just saying. Any others? Brady again had surgery on Friday. Okay, let's continue to lift up Brady. I haven't heard anything from the family. He was supposed to come home last night. Yeah. I talked to his grandmother. Somebody, um, I forgot what his name is. Bob. It's Larry's mother, Larry's husband. Uh, no, not Larry's husband. Larry was husband. He had to have a, I don't know what he has, but he has a problem. Okay. He's in the hospital. Well, let's lift up Bob. No, Bob. His name's Bob, not Walker. Bob, Bob. Okay, we'll lift up Bob. Yeah, that's it. I don't know what. what okay. His son, you know, he sits with me in. He don't, he, he don't know what's going on, and he told me to tell you about it. Okay. You know, that's it. Gonna, that's it. Okay. Yeah, I'm done. Let's pray for one. Uh, yeah, I'm done. Uh, that, that, that. It, it's not funny, but you know. Any others? Like, I think. Okay. Error? Error. Okay. Possible cancer. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Error. Okay. Error. Okay. Possible cancer. An error in his family cancer. Possible. Possible. Is that Lewis Becker? Are you Lewis? No, nah, Juan. Juan? Juan. Hi, Juan. I can't see real good with the shadows. Um, these floaters get in the way. But it's good to have you with us today. Thank you. Hi. I need to work. Good to see you. Any others? Let's pray. Father God. This, this situation with COVID has been such a, a strange ordeal. We know the Lord you're with your people. And so we thank you, God. The Lord, we come again this morning. Pray for Dolores as hospice has been called in. Pray for her family, for, for Dale, for, for Debbie. We're praying, Lord, to be a share as she can return to her home. We give you thanks, Lord, for just bringing her back for Brady. We're praying, the Lord, that he gets a good report and also, Lord, he heals well. Continue to pray, Lord, that this cancer will be totally eradicated in his body. Lift up the Lord. We're asking, Lord, your anointing and blessing upon her as she continues to, to recover. Lift up Barry. Pray, Lord, to be with him. We're thanking you, Lord, for just safety on the highway. We do lift up all those that are battling the COVID yet. We're lifting up Crystal, praying, Lord, that you might be with her as she goes through this procedure. And also, Lord, that you would strengthen her heart each and every day. We also lift up Rick as a rich to see also about his heart issues. We thank you, Lord, for the progress Jesse's making. We're praying, Lord, you continue to minister to him. We also lift up Bob. You know the needs, even better than that. Right. 
And for Eric, we're praying the Lord that your anointing and blessing might be there as well. If it's cancer, we're praying the Lord that healing him will be a one. Honor, and we just give you thanks and praise. All in Christ, holy name. And now we pray together. The prayer of Jesus taught us, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, how will be thy name? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And leave us not in temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <coughs> In our hymn is I Love to Tell the Story.
Our second lesson the morning is found in Luke's Gospel, chapter 7. After Jesus had finished all his sayings, in the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum. A centurion there had a slave whom he valued highly, and who was ill and close to death. When he heard about Jesus, he sent some Jewish elders to him, asking him to come and heal his slave. When they came to Jesus, they appealed to him earnestly, saying, He's worthy of having you do this for him, for he loves our people, and it is he who built our synagogue for us. And Jesus went with them. But when he was not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. Therefore, I do not presume to come to you. But only speak the word, and let my servant be healed. For I am also of him set under authority, with soldiers under me, and I say to one, go, he goes. And to another, come, he comes. And to my slave do this, and the slave does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him. And turning to the crowd that followed him, he said, I tell you, not even Israel have I found such great such faith. When those who had been sent returned to the house, they found the slave in good health. The word of God for the people of God. I don't think there's anybody here today that would disagree that music is a very powerful um, force in our lives. Now, we can be miserable, we can be down and out, and just not able to want it. All of a sudden, a, a song comes on the radio that just lifts our spirits, and suddenly we're ready to go and face the day. Now, sometimes a tune can get stuck in our head, and it can remain in there like for days. I know people, and I'm sure you do too, that will pick a church that they'll attend by the sound music that the church plays. I've also had people that have quit going to a certain church because they got new hymns. I just made them mad. I've also known people that quit the church because uh, the music never changed. Music truly is a very powerful force in our lives. Now some people enjoy a lot of different styles of music. Others are a little bit more narrowly focused. And by far they prefer only a, a certain style. Do we have any country music fans here in the church? I've seen some fans. I'm willing to bet you don't like rock and roll, do you? I do. Okay. <laughs> I, like I like old country and that how it looks like. You know, that's it. I like almost everything, but I can't stand hip hop. For some reason, it just does not resonate with me. I even like some classical, of all things. And that's, I mean, I grew up with Led Zeppelin for pain's sake. You know, in Boston, and, you know, some of the hard hit bands like White Snake and stuff like that. I mean, he did. Uh, Mozart? I've actually got like three good CDs. Well, he didn't make them. I mean, they're not three months. But yeah, I, I can listen to Mozart of all things. I can't pronounce his name, Chuckles of Oski or something, but I can listen to him too. I mean, you know, some people can listen to anything. And others, they don't want to listen to anybody singing. They'd, they'd rather be doing the singing themselves. But teach them. But show what it matters. What matters is that music is speaking the language of our soul. And it's a message of our God. Now the danger, of course, is when the music that's playing in our heads, it's not edifying ourselves. And it's not glorifying God. Some years ago, actually many years ago, um, there was a contemporary Christian artist, I can't even remember the guy's name, um, but he came out with a song that was entitled, Why Does the Devil Have All the Good Music? I didn't think it was much of a song, but I did think the, the song title was pretty catchy. Now, this guy actually wasn't the first guy to actually ask that question. A few years back, a certain son of a preacher man uh, was complaining to his dad that why did they have to keep singing those old funny duddy hymns of the church? Now his father was a preacher. And he challenged his son, if you think you know you're so smart, how about if you write something that can be sung in church? And the son took up the challenge. His name was Isaac Watts. And he wrote hymns like, Oh God, our help in ages past, and also Joy the World. You know, we sing it every now, that was right around 1700. Some years later, John and Charles Wesley, uh, they, they had a hand in starting this denomination. 
Uh, but they started writing songs to, of all things, the popular barroom dirges in England, of all things. You know, because they, they, they realized, you know, the, the music in the average bar room where people were sitting around with a mug of beer in their hand was actually better music and more singable than, than what people had in church. The only difference was that their lyrics were pure scripture in almost every case. In fact, it's been said that if you lost your Bible, you can put it back together again just by reading all of Charles Wesley's um, hymns. But they were, they were doing something new. They were singing a new song. They were praising God, you know, for God doing a new thing in their lives and in the lives of people around them. Now, the Psalms, such as the 96th Psalm, they must have been as uplifting for the Psalms that, that wrote them as they have been for believers of all ages. Um, how many ever read the Psalms? Maybe all the way through. There's some interesting psalms in there. You know, there's one that actually, you know, pleads with God that he would dash the, their enemy's children's heads against the rock. That's that. That's scripture. That's actually in there. Um, but after a while, the psalm does, you know, he gets over all that and he does start praising God again. But a lot of the psalms, they express this longing for the Lord to destroy wickedness and reestablish, you know, God's righteousness on earth. But Psalm 96 does What it does, it celebrates God's presence and God's glory. Now, laments, you know, of the psalmist <coughs> that are crying out for God to destroy their enemies, uh, they aren't going to be sung anymore when the Lord reigns in righteousness and truth. I don't know about you, but I'm looking at the signs of the times, and I have to wonder, are we not getting close to the time the Lord does Return. I mean, you, you can't help but looking at how the whole world is sort of turning around, you know, so few people that control it. Um, but anyhow, in our second lesson, Jesus had just got done healing a man with a withered hand. Now, in that day and age, if you couldn't work, you were like in trouble. And his hands for whatever reason, whether it was a birth defect or whatever, the guy couldn't work, he couldn't earn a, thing, uh, a living for his family. And uh, it was a pretty tough situation. But Jesus healed him, but he did it on the Sabbath. And he rebuked his critics who criticized him for healing on the Sabbath. And he, he asked them, he says, which is lawful on the Sabbath? To do good or do evil? To save a life or destroy it? And he followed this up by telling the people, he said, but I say to you that listen, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who takes from you. If anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do you. But he also told them, he said, don't judge. Do not be judged. Do not condemn, and you won't be condemned. Forgive, and you'll be forgiven. Give, and it'll be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put in your lap, for the measure you give will be the measure you get back. Then Jesus took a series of pot shots at those who were standing in the way of God's grace. He spoke about the blind leading the blind. He, he spoke about the impossibility of getting good fruit from a bad tree. And he spoke of the necessity of having a, a proper foundation under the spiritual houses that we are building in our lives. Now, in essence, Jesus was trying to give these leaders of his people, <coughs> leaders that were stuck in one place, he's trying to give them a new song. See, these, these people are so stuck and keeping all the balls in the air that was their life, that they were beginning to sound like a broken record. And they kept on repeating and building upon the mistakes of all the generations went before them. And they were not coming alive to the new things that the Father was giving to the world through His Son. Instead of worshiping God, they're worshiping the temple. They're worshiping what went on around the temple. Starting and stopping on time 
was more important to them than actually meeting God in worship. Making sure everything was polished and, you know, to shine, just right, was more important than turning to God and seeking His will for their lives, as well as for the life of the nation. Now you have to wonder how many people Jesus took, you know, took, how many people took Jesus seriously when He started, you know, cleaning up the outer court court of the Gentile, he started overturning the, the tables, the money changers, uh, those who were selling jobs and everything. Because this was dampening, you know, the ability of the people that could go no further than the court of the Gentile come into the presence of God. I mean, could you imagine some really distracting things going on in this sanctuary, how you could worship God? I've heard people who said they couldn't worship because the kid who was the pew next to them was eating Cheerios. Janitors love Cheerios in, in church. It's an awful lot better than you know chocolate candy because you've ever tried to get chocolate candy out of the pews. Uh, how about you know some of the other things that go on? You know, years and years and years ago, I had a tobacco habit. And to be honest, how many of you would would feel like worshiping if I had to say, excuse me, King? Well, that would not go over well. It would just sort of drive you away from God's presence. And that's what was going on in the outer court when Jesus cleansed it. Now, none of the people that Jesus was addressing were singing a new song. They were stuck with where they were. And they weren't moving closer to God anytime soon. They're just too filled with their own plans, their own concerns, to be open to what the Lord had new for them each and every day. If you've ever gotten into the gold drums spiritually, the fault lies at your own door because God is always trying to do new things. But the cares of this world, and face it, things don't always go right. Uh, the last 10 years of my life, I, I you know, I wouldn't do them over again if I could, um, on most parts of it, because it's just not my idea of, you know, the best time. But, God still gives us a new song. doesn't mean there are times when we have to grieve. There are times when, when we just feel like our world is falling apart. But that new song is there if you're willing to listen, if you're willing to pick it up. In our second lesson, when Jesus called everybody's attention to this guy outside of Israel's normal circles of grace, because he perfectly got what seemed to pass so many of them by. He's a wrong guy. He's a centurion. But this, this Roman guy, he, he's got this servant in his home. He suspects he might be a Jew. We're not really told. In those days, you could enter into uh, service. You could become a servant because you were in debt, and somebody bought your debt and become an indentured slave for a period of years. A lot of slaves, they weren't a slave for all of their life. Some of them were taken about later as slaves for life. But this Roman guy had a servant in his home. And, and he really, you know, liked him. He never him anymore. But anyhow, the servant gets deathly ill. I love what happens in this. When he had heard about Jesus, this is a centurion, he sent some Jewish elders to him asking him to come and heal a slave. When they came to Jesus, they appealed to him earnestly, saying, He's worthy of having you do this for him, for he loves our people, and it is he who built our synagogue for us. Did you get that? I mean, this centurion pulls out all the stops. He might have built a synagogue, but I don't think he's actually allowed to be in it. Um, but he leans on some of the elders of the Jews that are gathered around them, and he sends them to Jesus. To ask Jesus to come and heal a servant. Now, the elders seem more, more interested about maintaining the status quo than anything else. They keep their earnestly with them. You know, this man deserves to have you do this because he loves our nation and he built our synagogue for us. Uh, instead of singing a new song, these guys are trying to keep things going the way they were. And as long as the synagogue was in one piece, as long as everything was functioning properly, nothing else really mattered to them. Well, Jesus goes with them. He's not far from the centurion's house. And he sent some other friends who we sort of suspect they might have known the Lord, they might have worshipped the Lord, and apparently they're singing a new song. And so they deliver the centurion's message, Lord, do not trouble yourself. 
I'm not worthy to have you come under my roof. Therefore, I do not presume to come to you, but only speak the word and let my servant be healed. Now, the centurion didn't consider himself to be worthy of being in God's presence. Because all around the temple, that's what he'd been told. He wasn't worthy. He couldn't go beyond the court of the Gentile. He couldn't even enter, you know, the court of men. Or the court of women. He couldn't ever become a full Jew. All he could do was worship their God from afar. And that's exactly what he did. But he had this new song in his heart. And he was a content and a blessed man. He got what the elders of the Jews just did not get, that Jesus is Lord. Jesus can heal a broken heart. Jesus can heal infirmities. And turning to the elders around him, Jesus said, I tell you, I have not found such great faith in, in all of Israel. Now, when we truly get just who Jesus is, just like the century, we can't help ourselves. We're going to start singing a new song. I'm not the best singer. Can you believe I, I had a lady who was going to call the cops on me one time because I was singing Jesus Loves Me? I mean, it was one of those wonderful summer mornings. I mean, it was, it was hot. And so we were starting to work. I was, it was when I was in tree business. And so I'm climbing this tree, you know, this big old oak tree in front of this lady's mansion in the north side of Pittsburgh, and I didn't realize when it was over, and I'm just feeling, I mean, the birds are singing, I'm, I'm feeling good, I'm doing all that. I said, Jesus, well, she was going to call the police. Because there's some nut job out of her window. But can you sing this new song when the Lord enters your life, and you can't help but respond in, in a miraculous way. Now, in a, in a picturesque a time in town, there is a beautiful cathedral that was built back in the 14th century. I don't know if that's it or not. That's a beautiful cathedral. Well, the beauty of this church, I mean, tourists come to this town from all over the place. And it's inspired people to visit for hundreds of years. Now, the church is the tallest build, building in town. I mean, it, you, you're going to see it if you get in town. And tourists from all over the world, they come, they, they visit this place. They marvel at, you know, the, just the artwork. The structure and everything. Now you might think such a beautiful place would be awesome, you know, to worship it, you know, on a Sunday morning. You might even think it would be wonderful to be a part of such a magnificent church, but that's not the case. Now the truth is, when the new pastor arrived in town, he discovered that nobody came to worship. I mean, when he was preaching, the place was literally empty. Now this church is a, it's a artistic masterpiece. But spiritually, it's dead. And so the pastor made a very dramatic decision. He decided that he was going to move the congregation, the little there was, out of that magnificent structure. He's going to build his own church. And they built it out of cinder block. I mean, the only way to describe this church that he and a couple of townspeople built was it's ugly. But every Sunday, that thing is built. The capacity to overflow. A new church is a thriving, worshiping community. And it's, it's, it's just contagious with a vibrant faith. pastor offers this explanation. He says that beautiful 14th century church is not theirs. It belongs to another era. But our faith, to make any difference in our lives, first of all, it has to be your own. Faith isn't something you can borrow from your neighbors. It's not something you're giving to your parents or you know, people sit beside the church, we've got to clean our faith as our own. It's going to make a big difference in our lives. And when it does, we will have that new song that the psalmist is speaking about, and it'll be right home where it counts, right here in our home. Amen. That's right. Father God, we do like pray that you would show us and teach us that new song. Pray, Lord, you might touch us with the power of your Holy Spirit to transform our, our ugly and starkness into the wonder of your most spectacular life. We know, Lord, that we can overcome all things through Christ Jesus. And in lieu of this, and we pray, Lord, that we might begin to sing that new song. In Jesus' holy name, amen. And our hymn is, actually, we're, we're at communion.
you. You've never been in a United Methodist Church. Ours is an open communion. All are invited to come and receive the sacraments. Uh, we're not doing this like we would typically do on any other year because of COVID. Our bishop has requested we still use the Dixie Cups. Um, they have been thoroughly. Uh, you wore gloves when you put these in here, didn't you? Madam Secretary? No, but I did it two weeks ago. She didn't wear gloves when she did it. You did wash your hands, though, right? She washed her hands. And so no germs, COVID germs are going to exist in this thing for, for two weeks. Um, and so that, that's why we do this. Um, but you'll find the service on page 15, I believe, the hymnal. And also it's printed on the top of the screen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And so, as your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their name again. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and as a living sacrifice in union with Christ, offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And may we pray together again the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Give us not the temptation, deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and power, and glory. That is a very powerful prayer. And if you attempt to do what you're told to do by the Lord of prayer, you can't help but sing the song. And it took me years to figure this out, but if you've been that little tab down where you're holding the glass upright, you're actually stuck right at the cellophane on top, and so you can feel that. The body of Christ. Broken you and I have life. And we do that. Did everybody get to meet Bobby? Anybody need something? After slavery, look up the top. Love Christ put out for you and for many all for the forgiveness of sin. Thank you. Handlers, by the way, would really appreciate it that when you're done, uh, if you could put your 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 um, cup and also uh, little napkin, if you could that back in the thing, seal it and take it with you. Is there a cartoon out there? Uh, if you want, you can just pour it in. But our our volunteer janitors would be really really. Our hymn is page 451. Be done. <laughs>
fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you forever. Amen.